Okay, this is the uh, first in a series of demonstration videos for the uh, Alan Bradley PicoSoft software. Uh, as you can see, I've already started the program um, after downloading the free program from the internet. Uh, this is PicoSoft version 6.10. Uh, the build number is not that important. I uh, could have just as easily started it from the uh, programs list. If I went down here to start and clicked on all programs, Rockwell Software and PicoSoft 6. If I clicked on PicoSoft 6, I would start another instance of the program. The nice thing about this is we can have several copies since it's a Windows program. We can have several copies open and we can work on different programs as we go along. So um, I'm going to show the example of the, the uh, main screen here. It's a typical Windows program with uh, menu items at the top. The uh, center section here is where we will do our ladder programming. Uh, below this is some information based on what's in the ladder field, so uh, we'll go through that as we go along. To the left here is uh, a list of devices. Now, all uh, PLC software requires you to uh, select a PLC to start with uh, because the the, uh, the software has to know what you're going to connect up to and make sure that it's a valid program. Uh, so there's a number of devices here. If we click on a, uh, a plus sign here, we expand the, uh, the device list. Uh, we're going to be using the 1760L12BWB Series A. And you notice when I click on that, some information here in the information field um, was populated based on this particular processor. It has eight inputs, two analog inputs, it has four outputs, uh, 16 marker bits. Um, a lot of this isn't going to mean anything to you right now, but it will as we go along. So uh, this is our device list. As you can see, there's a lot of different processors that this uh, supports. Um, we, again, are going to be using the L12BWB. The last uh, thing of interest here is the tabs at the bottom. There are four tabs. We are going to be ex examining the circuit diagram and simulation mainly. So in order to get started with a program, I'm going to just simply click and drag this L12BWB onto the uh, programming area. Um, immediately below it, uh, there's a uh, entry. I, if I wanted to put a password here, I could. I'm not going to do that now, so suffice it to say this is what the device looks like if you're there physically looking at it. And we're going to start with a circuit diagram. When I click on that tab at the bottom left, circuit diagram, then in the left hand side I have a selection for the uh, logical elements that I can put into my program and then in the program area I have a uh, uh, place where I can put my ladder diagram. So simplest program that I could write and again this is just based on click and drag. Simplest program I could write is a, just a simple input. If you notice as I click and drag this there's an area there's areas in the screen where it will let me and it will not let me drop these. So I'm going to drop this on the first location so I have input 1 and I'm gonna have that again once again there's areas it will not let me drop it and I'm gonna have that energize output 1 um, in order to make this look more like a ladder diagram what we're used to I'm gonna go up here to view and click on ANSI CSA so now it looks more like a contact and a relay output as you uh, if you notice as I as I select the elements down here at the bottom um, I am uh, presented with a list of inputs. As we said earlier that this can be up to eight inputs. I'm going to select the first input. And the contacts can either be normally open or normally closed. So I'm going to select just a make contact. If I select the output again this is where I can select one of four since it has four outputs. So that's my simple program. Uh, it's always a good idea to uh, verify the project. So um, all uh, all PLC programs have a uh, have a uh, verification or a plausibility check. In our case here, I'm going to click on Project and Plausibility Check, and I get a confirmation that the program can be used for simulation and communication. So that's good. 
So there's my simple program. I'm going to go to simulation now, the tab at the bottom left here. And once again, the left hand portion of the screen uh, in, uh, gives an indication of a number of functions that I can, I can look at. Um, I'm going to open up the inputs. And this is where, um, as we can see, uh, mimics of push buttons that um, I can use in my simulation to, to simulate the program. So um, if I go up here to simulation and click on start, uh, now the, uh, the simulation function in the program is going to allow me to test out my, my uh, logic here. So I'm going to press the first button here and as you can see the screen turned red when I clicked on the button and the output is on. Now uh, one thing of note and one thing to be uh, careful of is we can configure these push buttons for either retentive or uh, just normal operation. Uh, this one with the little carrot on the left hand side here shows that it's retentive so I didn't have to press the button and hold it all I had to do was operate it. So in order to change though that function I want to go to IR and there's four columns here uh, the, this column here, the second column, would be what we would normally use for a normal push button. So I'm going to select that second column, and then I'm going to go down here to my push button. And as you see, as you can see, when I press the button, it operates the output. When I release the button, it uh, turns the output off. So uh, that's a simple way uh, of changing the functions. They are either retentive, normally open, normally closed, or normal uh, function, normally open, normally closed. Uh, sometimes in the labs that will be important to us, uh, but for right now that's all we need to that's all we need to think about. So I'm going to close that back up, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the simulation, and I'm going to go back to circuit diagram, and I'm going to add another element here. I'm going to put input two on the page and then in order to connect these in any sort of manner I need to click on the pen or pencil here and it turns on screen where I can actually draw the connections so I've drawn the connection once again I want to go over here to plausibility check it says I'm good I can go down here to simulation now I can go back up here to simulation and press the, press the menu item and press start or if you notice there's a button over here. So I'm going to click that since it's real simple. I'm going to click that and I should be able to operate with either push button 1 or push button 2. Now notice that push button 2 is configured for retentive so I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to change that out and now as you can see I have to click on it and hold it either one will operate output one. So I'm going to stop my simulation and I'm going to do one more change here to my circuit diagram. I'm going to put a second output here. Once again notice it'll allow me to drop it in certain places and I'm going to make this output two. Go through my plausibility check. It says I'm good to go. I'm going to go to my simulation tab. I'm going to run my simulation and if I click on input 1, both outputs turn on. If I click on input 2, both outputs turn on. So that's the way I expected it to work. And I think that's a majority of the lab that we have tonight. Now I can save this file by going to Save As. And it puts it in a default location. I can just say this is Lab 1. And save, if you notice, this is a E60 suffix la uh, file, so I'm going to save that as that. And then I'm good to go. I can always go back and I can find that. I can find that lab the way I've described it. I can find it in my documents folder. So uh, that would be the way you'd submit the labs. And um, with that, I'm going to stop the simulation. And that concludes this, uh, this video for Basic Pico.